It was such a remarkable twist of fate that my daughter and you both get to experience the miracle of childbirth on the same day. I'm sorry I couldn't make it to the hospital when you gave birth yesterday, because I felt the need to be there with my daughter. I hope you can comprehend the circumstances I was facing and find it in your heart to forgive me. I'm well aware of what happened. My husband already told me about it, so you don't have to worry yourself too much. It was such a shame. I wish I could just go back in time and be there for you after you gave birth to your child. I really wanted to see my grandchild's face. Oh, let me fill you in on the latest news. My exceptional daughter Amelia has delivered an absolutely marvelous and robust baby boy. He weighs a solid eight pounds and possesses the most beautiful little nose and lips. Although his eyes are currently closed, I'm hoping that he inherits his mom's captivating eye color. If that happens to be the case, brace yourself. He's destined to be an absolute showstopper. Really? I'm glad to hear it. I'm happy for Amelia and her husband. They must be over the moon to see their baby boy. And did I tell you about his name? We were undecided between Alexander and Samuel, but in the end we went with Ethan. Isn't it a beautiful name? It means strong and enduring in Hebrew. I'm sure my daughter's son will grow up to be a great man. Oops, <laughs> my bad, I'm sorry. I got so carried away talking about Amelia's child that I almost forgot about yours. So, how is your baby doing? I wish I could be there to help you, but my hands are full of taking care of Ethan. My baby is doing fine until now, but you know, Helen was born prematurely so she has some health complications. The doctors are keeping a watchful eye on her, doing everything they can to ensure her safety. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm sure Helen is a wonderful girl, but she's just a little less fortunate than her cousin Ethan. But that's okay. Not everyone is born perfect like Ethan, right? So you shouldn't be too hard on yourself. And did Aiden also know about Helen's condition? Well, of course. He knows all about it since he took me to the hospital and was there for me in the delivery room. Oh no! I'm so sorry to hear that. I know how much Aiden has been looking forward to welcoming a healthy child into his life. I wasn't there with you, but I can imagine how disappointed he must have been. I hope he didn't say anything to hurt you or Helen. She's still his daughter after all. Actually, he was incredibly supportive of me and Helen. He encouraged me to be strong, comforted me, and told me that everything will be okay. I'm so glad I have Aiden by my side. He's given me all the courage and strength in the world to get through this difficult time and stay strong for our daughter. Oh, Elena, I know Aiden was just trying to be nice to you. He was raised to be a kind and thoughtful man, so of course he would say those things to you. But I bet deep down he's feeling disappointed and regretful. I wish I could be there and support you both, but what can I do? Amelia needs my help and Ethan needs his grandmother by his side. I hope you're not too lonely without me. It's okay. I totally understand. I have my husband, parents, friends, and relatives here to support me. So you don't need to worry too much. Just focus on taking good care of Amelia and her child. Aiden and I will be fine. I want to give my grandson extra love and attention because the first stage of his life is very important for bonding. I hope you don't think I'm neglecting your daughter. I'm a kind person and I would never do anything to hurt you or her. I'd be really sad if you thought I was a bad mother-in-law and I would hate for you to tell other people that I treat you badly. You know I'm not a gossip, right? I won't say anything that I'm not supposed to. I'm well aware that you try hard to support me and my family and I appreciate it. Thanks for understanding, darling. I'll visit you and Helen as soon as I can. I know she'll be so happy to see your grandmother. Hey, Elena. Are you free to chat? I'd like to get your opinion on something. Yes, I'm here. What is it? You know, Ethan's birthday is coming up soon, right? I'm planning to give him the perfect birthday, but I haven't thought of anything yet. Could you help me out a bit? Or at least give me some suggestions for the party? Like the main theme, decor, food and all of that. I want to make this his best birthday ever. Oh, I was also thinking about how I can make a nice surprise for Helen on her birthday. What if we celebrate both Ethan and Helen's birthdays at the same time? 
Isn't that a great idea? Elena, I remember mentioning that we cannot combine the two birthday parties, didn't I? My house is simply too small to accommodate everyone. It'll be too cramped for all of us, and everyone will feel uncomfortable. Then why don't we eat out at a restaurant? That way, we can all fit in the same place and have a good time together. Have you thought it through? Restaurants are too expensive and crowded. I don't like people staring at me and my grandson. And need I remind you about the dangerous kidnappers who often target young children, especially those as beautiful as Ethan. Ethan needs to stay indoors for his safety and well-being. Oh, okay. Fine then. I can see that you're not comfortable with the idea of celebrating Helen's and Ethan's birthdays together. Oh, thank you for understanding, my dear. I have one more request. Could you please ensure that Helen does not attend school as well? What kind of a request is that? Why can't Helen go to school? Do you have some kind of prejudice against her? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Don't get me wrong, darling. It's just that Helen and Ethan are in the same class, correct? And it might be a serious threat to Ethan's safety. And why so? I seriously don't understand. What's so difficult to understand? Look, let me break it down to you. Helen has been on medication for a long time, and that type of medication is causing her to have an awful and distinctive body odor. Her smell is even worse when she sweats. And do you know that Ethan is allergic to that kind of odor from Helen? In fact, Helen's smell is so bad that it makes it difficult for anyone to get near her. Even me. She's so unhygienic. If you're a responsible mother, you should keep your daughter in a safe place, which means away from everyone else. Especially Ethan. What are you even talking about? Helen doesn't have an awful smell like you just said. I shower her every day and make sure she stays clean. It's important for her to be hygienic because she's more vulnerable to germs and bacteria than we are. In fact, she's probably more hygienic and well-kept than any of us. I think you're just overreacting. Stop being too harsh on Helen. She's just a little girl. She doesn't deserve to be treated like this. Oh, did you not hear a word I said? Ethan is severely allergic to Helen's body odor. When his allergy is triggered, he has trouble breathing, a fast heart rate, swollen eyes, itchy skin, and even worse. In fact, being around Helen could literally put Ethan in a life or death situation. If that happens, are you willing to take responsibility? Honestly, what you just told me is incredibly difficult to believe. Your explanation is clumsy and awkward, like you just made it up on the spot. I'm not buying a word you say, unless you can provide me with scientific evidence or a doctor's recommendation to back it up. Helen deserves to go to school like any other child, and I'm not going to prevent her from doing so simply because of your baseless story. Although her health is unstable, she is still an outgoing girl who always strives to do her best at school. She loves being surrounded by her friends, and it would be a crime to ask her to leave school. No, oh, come on. Why don't you just stop living in your fantasy world and face reality? Helen has never felt well and her condition has only been getting worse recently. You even told me that she had to stay in the hospital for the whole month last month to receive treatment. So what's the point of letting her go to school? She has no personal life, no future, nothing. She's just a burden to everyone around her. She's like... A feeble little ray of sunlight on a rainy day that could fade away at any time. Are you even listening to yourself right now? I can't believe you just said those hurtful things. What gives you the right to tell my daughter to quit her studies? If you have a problem with Helen going to school, then you can take it up with the teacher. But don't you dare try to bully her into dropping out. <gasps> what? How could you use that tone to talk with your mother-in-law? I'm totally speechless. I can't believe that Aiden married someone as rude and disrespectful as you. Don't flatter yourself. You're only accepted in this family because you married my son. And let's be honest, what have you done to prove that you're worthy of being a member of this family other than giving birth to an ailing girl who can't even take care of herself? You're so pathetic, Alina, just like your little daughter. This society has no place for either of you. What did you just say? What on earth gives you the right to make those malicious comments about my daughter? You're stepping out of line, Scotty. One more word and you'll regret it. I'm not someone to be trifled with, especially when it comes to Helen. 
I can become really scary when someone talks down on my child. Apologize to me and Helen now. <laughs> Apologize? Don't be absurd. I'm Helen's grandmother and I know what's best for her. I don't need your permission to tell her what to do. And what I want right now is for Helen to drop out of her school. I know what's best for her. And with her declining health status, she won't be able to keep up with her studies much longer. So why prolong the inevitable? Don't be so stubborn. We all know what's going to happen. You claim to be Helen's grandmother, but you never cared about her. Not one bit. You didn't visit her once after she was born. You ignored her when she tried to talk to you about her accomplishments at school. You ruthlessly criticized her paintings or anything else she does, saying that it's not half of what Ethan can do. Helen is just a little girl, and she looks up to you as her grandmother. But what do you do to her? You treat her as if she doesn't even exist. Compare her to Ethan and put her down. How dare you say anything about her? You don't deserve to be called her grandmother. If this is how you choose to live your life as a grandmother, then fine. I'm not asking you to change, but I am asking you to stay away from me and my daughter. I never want to see or hear from you again. Who are you and why have you been calling my number? Do you realize that you have been calling me for the past 15 minutes? I'm busy at the moment, so can you kindly leave a message or call me later? What are you talking about? I'm your mother-in-law, Scotty. Did you already forget about this old lady? Scotty? Well, if it's you, then yes. I've been trying to erase all my memories about you. Oh, come on. How can you be so petty? It's been years since we last talked and you're still holding a grudge against me. Get over yourself. Look, I'm truly sorry for what I said years ago. It was wrong of me and I hope you and your husband can forgive me. I would like to come back into your lives. What have you and your family been up to all this time? Are you being serious? After all this time, you're just now saying sorry to me? What are you up to, Scotty? Just spill it. No, what do you mean? My intentions are sincerely genuine. I really want to make amends for our relationship, and I hope you will accept my apology as it is and welcome me back into your lives again. To be honest, I really miss my son and my granddaughter. It's been years since I last saw them. Oh, just so you know, our whole family is going on a family vacation next Monday. My husband, my daughter, and my grandson are all coming with me on this family trip. So what do you say? Would you and your husband like to come with us? I guarantee it'll be a lot of fun. Look, Scotty, did someone tell you what day it is next Monday? What? What day? Oh, I know. It's about Helen, right? She gets sick and needs to be hospitalized again. What a familiar story. Well, as a loving grandmother, I begrudgingly decided that Helen is also allowed to join our family's vacation. But to be honest, I don't think she's good enough for this trip. We're gonna go sightseeing, engage in various outdoor activities, and try different foods. Just stop, Scotty. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, what? Did I offend you again? I'm just stating the facts. I mean, come on. A frail, feeble girl like Helen wouldn't survive one minute if she even steps one foot outside her house. She's probably gonna spend the whole time in bed anyway. From the bottom of my heart, I advise you to let her stay home and hire some caregiver to look after her. In the end, it's a relaxing family vacation, not some kind of medical tourism for Helen. <laughs> Are you done talking? I'm sure my husband already told Amelia what will happen on the following Monday and asked her to let you know. What? I genuinely don't know what event will take place next Monday. Can you please enlighten me, Elena? I guess it must be something fun and exciting. If that's the case, then count me in. <laughs> Next Monday is Helen's funeral. How could you not know about it? Did you deliberately ignore it like you always do when it comes to anything that has to do with my daughter? You didn't even bother to come see her one last time before she passed away. When my husband called you, you said you were busy. But that wasn't true, was it? You weren't busy. 
You just didn't come because deep down, you hate my daughter. Am I right? Why don't you just admit it and stop pretending to be innocent? Oh, are you saying this for real? Helen's funeral? I swear I didn't know about that at all. But I already booked the flight, the hotel, and made other arrangements. It would be a huge waste of time and money if I just cancel everything, right? Well, maybe you and your husband can attend your daughter's funeral all by yourself while other people in our family can enjoy our relaxing trip together. After all, it's just a stupid funeral and no one would want to go there anyway, don't you think? I wonder how much fun it would be to hold a funeral that not a living soul wants to attend. It'll only be you and your husband whining and sobbing next to your daughter's coffin. <laughs> what? So now you even refuse to attend your own granddaughter's funeral? You truly are a monster, Scotty. You disgust me to my core. Yeah, yeah, keep on talking nonsense and insulting me. For your information, I know very clearly that next Monday will be your daughter's funeral. That's why I intentionally booked the vacation trip on that very same day. This way, no one in our family will pay respects to Helen at her funeral. <laughs> How genius of me! You always think that your puny little daughter is the center of the universe, and everyone has to slave away for her, huh? Guess what? She doesn't mean anything. She's just an insignificant speck of dust that I'll gladly step on and walk all over. What? So that was your plan all along? You deliberately booked the family trip on the same day as Helen's funeral so that no one will attend her funeral? You're a pure devil, Scotty. I know that you've disliked Helen for a long time, but I couldn't imagine that you'd go that far to prove how much you hate her. You didn't know how happy I was when I heard Helen was finally a goner. Such a good riddance. I thought it might take longer for your daughter to say goodbye to this world, but I didn't know that it would come so quick. I've been patiently waiting for this day for so long, and now it's finally here! Oh! What's this delicious feeling coursing through my veins? Could it be the thrill of finally getting my revenge on my daughter-in-law and her little brat? <laughs> you're sick in your head. I'm surprised that you're still here instead of some kind of madhouse. See? I told you so. I told you from the beginning that you're not fit to be a mother, but you didn't listen. Frankly, I never wanted a worthless and pathetic woman like you to give birth to my grandchild. What did you do? You completely ignored my warning and now you have to face the consequences of your reckless action. That's how life always works, right? Scotty, you must be absolutely deranged. Helen is your own flesh and blood. I'm asking you one last time. Did you ever have any love or affection for Helen? Any at all? Love and affection? <sighs> Stop deluding yourself. Do you know what I see in Helen? A frail and desperate little creature who's destined to die at a very young age. And I was totally right all along. What? Even criminals display more compassion towards their own kin than you do. Your callousness towards your own family is truly despicable. Do you know what I always dreamed of? A peaceful retirement surrounded by healthy grandchildren. But what did you give me? A bedridden granddaughter. It's all your fault. Your family's genes are the reason for your daughter's illness. I should have known better. I should have stopped Aiden from marrying you. Didn't I tell you? Helen's illness is not hereditary. It has nothing to do with my family's lineage. So stop with your baseless accusations. Besides, even though Helen wasn't feeling well most of the time, she always tried to stay positive and make others happy with her energy. I'm proud of her strength and resilience, and I'm grateful that she chose me as her mother. Oh, please, spare me the sanctimonious act. We both know how disappointed you were when Helen was born. She wasn't even a normal human being. If you'd left her in the hospital, you and your husband would be living a much better life right now. You would have more time for each other to make more babies who are healthier and more deserving of your time and effort. Instead, you choose to do things the hard way and raise a child who was meant to be a burden to herself, her parents, and society. 
How dare you say that Helen is not a normal human being? Have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately? You're the one who's denying your own grandchild. What does that make you other than a monster in disguise? Seriously? I'm being criticized for trying to help. How is that fair? I know. Just because I'm an old and vulnerable mother-in-law doesn't mean you can bully me whatever way you want. Oh, people, look at Elena, my so-called daughter-in-law. She's bullying me to death. Please call me an ambulance. I can't take her rudeness and cruelty anymore. Old and vulnerable, asking for help? Spare me the crocodile tears. Are you trying out for a soap opera or something? You are nothing but a devil, Scotty. Your capacity for cruelty knows no bounds, and it is painfully evident for all to see. Rest assured, your heinous acts against your own flesh and blood will not go unnoticed or unpunished. Sooner or later, karma will catch up with you, and you'll have to face the reckoning you so rightfully deserve. Hi, Elena. How's everything at the funeral? I'm here at the airport waiting to be on board. I know this vacation is gonna be amazing! <sighs> you again, huh? You don't know how much time I spent yesterday just to pack my belongings. From meticulously selecting the perfect sunscreen, floppy hat, camera, and sunglasses, to gathering an assortment of toiletries. I spared no expense. And of course, my designer clothes! They're the epitome of fashion, showcasing the latest models of this year. I have a plan to wear a new outfit every day to show off my good taste in clothes. Can you imagine the envy that'll stir among onlookers? <laughs> oh, I must say, even though I've reached my 60s, I simply refuse to acknowledge it. In fact, people often think I'm in my 30s. I guess I have a timeless look. And why are you telling me all these things? It seems like you're quite lonely at the airport, aren't you? What do you mean by lonely? I'm just waiting for everyone else to arrive. Now that I come to think about it, I had specifically told my husband and my daughter to get everything ready and come to the airport at 7 in the morning. But why hasn't anyone showed up yet? Hmm. Did they miss my messages? Well, I'm not too concerned. Maybe they're just stuck in a traffic jam or something. That's why they're a little bit behind schedule. Yep. Yeah. It surely is the traffic. Well, keep on waiting. You can wait until midnight if you want to, but I guarantee you that no one will show up. I told my husband and daughter multiple times. I texted them, called them, and even put a huge note on the front door, reminding them about the departure time. I did everything I could to make sure that they saw my message. I'm telling you, there's no way they could have missed it. So, you think they just forgot about your message, huh? Or maybe they accidentally missed your calls and texts? Or maybe they just didn't see your huge note on the front door? Give me a break. You're either too dense to realize that they deliberately ignored you, or you're just too self-centered to even think of that possibility. How could it be? They're my daughter and my husband. How could they not listen and do what I specifically told them to do? That would be so mean of them, seriously. They are fed up with you and the way you treat others, Scotty. And they really despise your condescending manners towards Helen, your own granddaughter. Your husband and daughter did read some of your countless messages about the stupid vacation that you orchestrated, but they were indifferent. In fact, when I showed them the text messages in which you bragged about the real reason for your vacation trip, they were absolutely livid. They told me what you did is unforgivable and you're not worthy of being part of this family. No way. It can't be. I don't believe you. You're such a terrible liar. Sorry to tell you that I'm not. Your husband, daughter, and even your grandson, Ethan, are here. Do you want to speak with them directly to clear things out? They're sitting right next to me. What? What did you badmouth me to them, you filthy little snitch? I swear I'm going to crush you. Just you wait and see. You really pissed me off, Alina. Yeah. Keep on insulting and threatening me. It'll only make your family hate you even more. Oh, no, no, no. I hope you realize that I didn't mean a single word of what I said, right? It was all just a lighthearted joke. 
And I never imagined for a second that you would actually take it seriously. <laughs> Look, let's just brush aside all these silly misunderstandings between us and start afresh, shall we? Life's just too short to dwell on such trivial matters, don't you agree? So let's put this behind us and embrace a new beginning filled with laughter and understanding. I mean, come on. Helen's already dead, so what's the point of crying over a dead person? She doesn't even exist in this world anymore. Just forgive me. Then tell my husband and daughter to come here and join me on my trip. What? Seriously? Is this your attempt to make amends with me? By saying that it's no use crying over a dead person? Just when I thought I couldn't resent you more. Oh my goodness! What's the matter with you? Can't you see that I'm simply expressing my honest thoughts and feelings? It's the truth, plain and simple. Elena, please, this is not a moment for jokes or games. I've invested so much, and I mean everything, into this trip. Every single aspect has been meticulously planned and paid for. But if I were to cancel my reservations now, I'd lose every ounce of the money I've put in. Do you honestly have the heart to stand by and watch me suffer such a devastating loss? Why should I care? It's clearly your problem, not mine. Maybe you should have taken the time to seek consent from all of the other people involved before rushing ahead and making decisions all by yourself. So go ahead, have a grand time on your so-called perfect family trip, all on your lonesome. Oh, by the way, remember to sign your part of the divorce papers when you come back. Divorce papers? What divorce papers? What are you even babbling about? What else? Your husband is divorcing you. He is sick of your cruelty and has decided to part ways with you. Not only that, your daughter also told me that she is going to move to a new place far away from you without you knowing the address. She's disgusted by the way you treated Helen while overindulging Ethan. Do you know what all that means? That means you'll never get to see anyone in your family again. No, you're lying. My husband and daughter can't be so cruel to me. What have I done to deserve this? I'm innocent! I'm innocent! What poison have you whispered in their ears to manipulate them into betraying me? I demand an answer! How could you have orchestrated such a betrayal? Answer me! I have done nothing. Absolutely nothing. It is your own sheer lack of empathy and malicious behavior that have brought you to this point. But you know what? Karma has a funny way of catching up to people like you. So go ahead, enjoy your perfect family trip all on your own. And when you return, have a marvelous time navigating the divorce proceedings. Naturally, Scotty's excitement for a vacation was completely shattered upon hearing the news I had shared with her. She hastily made her way home only to discover the divorce papers neatly placed on the table, already signed by her husband. As a result of the divorce, Scotty was kicked out of the house. Her husband even found indisputable evidence of her embezzling his salary over the course of the past 10 years. Not a single penny was awarded to her in the aftermath of the divorce. Desperate for support, Scotty turned to friends and relatives, but only encountered indifference. Once they learned of her callous decision to skip her own grandchild's funeral, their disdain for her grew even stronger. No one offered her any assistance. Eventually, she found herself seeking refuge in an elder shelter. Although still grieving over the loss of my daughter, my husband and I strive to remain resilient, finding solace in one another. We cherish every precious memory we shared with Helen, knowing that she watches over us from above uplifting our spirits each and every day.